And there we go. Look at, look at that cross section, guys. All right, guys. Welcome back. It is a new year, and we might as well start off strong with a video of mine. So, anyways, um, this recipe is a classic recipe. It's hamburger and potatoes. Can't go wrong with that. It's my favorite thing to eat on the weekends. So I'm gonna show you the potatoes and the way I make my hamburgers, and it's it's a process, but it's definitely worth it. Anyways, we got potatoes, and what we do is um, we wash it the day before, and then the next day they're ready to go. They're clean, and then we peel them. So. First, we gotta peel the potatoes. And when you're doing this, you just gotta be careful. Don't cut yourself while doing this, but you gotta peel the skin. Try not to take off too much of the meat of the potato. And you gotta hurry up because the, the grill is ready, almost ready. All right guys, so when you're cutting potatoes, don't make this mess like me, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And so here's the potato peeled for the most part and now I'm going to cut it. Let me show you how I cut it. So first, take a sharp knife, you cut it down the middle like that and then you cut it in half again to make fours, quarters. And then now we do this, we cut it, we put it like this, potatoes, and we cut it this way. If it's too thick, it will be raw and it won't cook properly. If it's too thin, then it's going to burn. So we do it like this, just big enough. Like this, guys. So these pieces, like these, is a perfect size. And then you put it in here, put it low, you don't wanna make it splash everywhere. Like this. All right, guys, so we got all the potatoes cut and now potatoes go in there. So let's put all the potatoes in here and as you can see, they're beautifully cut and this is how it should be. And make sure you don't make a mess while putting the potatoes in the oil. And then after this, we put this on the stove on high heat. And the trick here is we gotta try to get all the potatoes submerged in the oil like a deep fryer, and that's how it gets crispy golden brown. So if you follow me, dang over here, just be careful because it's heavy. Put it in the middle. And you turn it on. Like that, guys. Oh, here we go. All right, guys, I got the bacon. Can't go wrong with bacon. If you don't put bacon on your hamburger, it's kind of a sin. Just kidding, but that's that's how I roll. Now, I'm a Costco fanboy. I got this from Costco. I love bacon, and uh, here it is. I'm currently cooking the bacon in here. I'm gonna put it on top of the hamburger. It's gonna be great, guys. All right, guys, so before I talk about the meat, like the most important part of the hamburger, I gotta talk about the knife. So I got this from Amazon, and this knife is amazing. It's awesome for cutting stuff. Um, it's beautiful, the design is nice, and it's just great to use for basically anything. And um, anyways, put that away, careful with that. Here's the meat, and um, this is for also from Costco, and this is grass-fed, and uh, this might taste a little different from other hamburger patties, the other ones are like, uh, corn-fed or whatever, whatever they feed them, but these are generally, they taste better, at least to me, they taste better, they're better for your health, and they're actually quite meaty, so I usually do two patties and stuff, and uh, it's great. I usually, sometimes I do, when I'm really hungry, sometimes I do three, but generally the sweet spot for me is two patties, so. Anyways, it's time to season the patties. So first, put it away, and um, now we season both sides. Just a little salt on both sides. All I like to do is salt and pepper, guys. That's it. Simple. Like that, and then we flip them. Make sure you get enough salt everywhere. Not too much, but enough. And then I like to generally put pepper. Just don't put too much pepper, because otherwise you can't eat it. It'd be strong. But I like to put enough pepper on the, on one side, one side only, because it's enough. And there we go, we got a season, all seasoned now. And then after the grill's ready, we put it on like this. And the reason why we do it frozen is because 
if you put it when it's thawed out, it will fall apart on the grill. So this will help it stay together when you cook it. All right guys, so here are the potatoes cooking on the stove. And as you can see, as I said, the potatoes are submerged and that's the secret to getting them golden brown and uh, got to keep them there. And uh, once in a while you want to turn them and flip them just so they all cook evenly. And after a while they start to get softer and smaller and then that's how you know they're cooking right. All right guys, so here's the grill and you can also get this grill from Amazon, I think. Amazon, right? So you get this grill from Amazon and I assemble it, it's easy. It's really easy to assemble and it's perfect. This size is perfect. So anyways, here's a charcoal and the secret to having like charcoal that burns evenly is a chimney. We put the charcoal in here and, and what we do is um, we get some paper towels, we put some oil and we use a lighter, we light it, we put it on the bottom and then we gotta wait for this to get really hot and then once all the charcoals are like white, like whitish black, you then you would put it in, let it sit, let it get really hot and then that's how you know that it's ready. All right guys, so here are my buns for the hamburger and what I like to do is I like to put butter on the pan and then and then I don't usually do it immediately I usually do it towards the end when the meat is almost done so that it's not like soggy so like it's fresh so then I just put it like this and then the butter would melt from the heat of the potatoes and then and then I could if I wanted I could turn it on on low and then make sure it's golden brown all right so now I gotta do the sauce and this is how I make my sauce you can call it a secret sauce but whatever this is how I do it so first I take mayonnaise in this bowl what two Spoon's worth of mayonnaise, guys. And then I put the ketchup next. Make sure you shake this. There you go. It's the ketchup. And then I put the mustard. I don't put too much mustard because I don't want to be overpowering, so I just put enough like that. There you go. And then I put the relish. A little more. I like pickles. And then now I would mix it together. Mix it well, because you want to combine everything. Let's see. Look at the bottom too, guys. All right, there we go. That's the sauce that I made for the hamburger. Like that. All right, guys, so this is where it gets interesting. I'm gonna make guacamole with the hamburger, and I most people don't usually put that, but I like to put it for extra flavor. So, anyways, here's the ingredients I use. This is not like the traditional guacamole. I don't put lemon or cilantro. I just put onion, avocado, and tomato. So, anyways, first I would cut the onion into small pieces. I'm gonna dice it. I'm no expert with um, dicing, so I just generally do it like this. Make sure they're small pieces because the onion can be powerful. You want to make sure they're evenly cut. Oh. Anyways, take the onion and put it in a bowl. Now for the tomato. And a little way, and the same thing. Cut it into small pieces. I could do it like this: slices of tomatoes. And then I would dice it like the onion. And then now the avocado, guys. So first, I would do this. Just be careful when you cut open the avocado. You don't, you don't want to cut yourself because the knife is sharp, like I said before. And you would cut around it. And you would twist it. That. Oh, I need a spoon. All right. And now we take the seed out. Oh, careful when you do that, guys. There's a seed. And now I would like to do this. I like to slice the avocado. Just be careful as you're going around. I do this so that it's easier to mash together when we walk. All right, there we go. And then now we put it inside the bowl. Make sure you get all the avocado in there. You don't want to waste any. 
we go. Just one down and then the other one. And now you just mix it together. And then after mixing, you would put salt too. And here's the salt right here. And after that, we take the salt, and depending on the salt, you season the taste. So just put enough salt. Some people like no salt, some people like a lot of salt, like normal amount of salt. I know we need a little more because usually it's not enough. Okay, there we go. Mix a little more. Make sure you get the walls too. And there we go, guys. There's the guac for the hamburger. All right, guys. So here I am. The grill is ready to go. As you can see, the charcoals are all nice and hot. And now I just put them in. And uh, just be careful when you place them in. There we go. I don't put the cheese until the end, but the secret here is you put three minutes on both sides. And then on the, on the, when you flip it, you would, uh, after you flip it the first time, you put the cheese. So I'll show that a little later. But for now, I put some charcoals, not charcoals, wood chips, <laughs> wood chips. Enough wood chips in there, so it gives it extra flavor. There we go. And then, you gotta make sure you push it in there, so then that fire will start burning. And you want that smoke, so you gotta make sure you... Leave it open so that the smoke will rise. Okay, all right, guys. So you guys, you can see the potatoes are still cooking, but now we gotta take out the bacon. The bacon's ready. So now there's the bacon. And now we just I don't like too much grease, so I tend to um, put it paper towel on the plate and then make sure we get it all out. We don't want to overcook it. Just be careful when you do this because the oil is hot. You don't want to burn yourself. All right, and there we go, there's bacon. And then next, what we would do is we take another paper towel and we would dry it. All right guys, so I like to put a uh, sunny side up egg on my hamburger, but anyways, I'd crack an egg. I'd reuse the same bacon grease and uh, just put an egg in there, go down low. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Make sure you take that little piece out too. All right guys, so it's been three minutes and now it's time to flip them, but here's the cheese that I use for the hamburgers. And this is Irish cheese. You can use any cheese you want, but I found I like I like this cheese the most. So, anyways, here we go. Make sure you don't break them; just nicely flip them. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Flip them, and then now we'll put the cheese on. So I like to put them with my hand because it's more accurate that way. But here we go. Put the cheese. These are big slices, but then they melt. And the secret that we found over the years is that if you Put the cheese while the hamburgers are cooking, then they'll melt evenly. So there we go. And then now, we don't put any more wood chips because that's already enough. Now we just cover it and we'll put it sit for three minutes and then they're done. All right guys, so the potatoes are ready now and as you can see, they're all golden brown and ready to go. Look at them, nice and crispy. All right guys, so now the potatoes are done. As you can see, they're nice and hot. And what I like to do is I like to put the salt immediately after they're done because then the salt will stick. So here we go. Put a nice amount of salt, not too much, but just enough. You give, give it flavor. All right, guys. So here the hamburgers are ready to go, and now we will let them sit for five minutes because otherwise the, all the juice would escape from the hamburgers. Here are the buns, and as you can see, they're um, oh, they're ready. So here we go. We put them in, and then we turn it off, and then when, when you see that they're golden, golden brown, that's how you know they're ready to go. My favorite part: assembly. So I like to pay attention to the details, and here we go. Here's the buns. They're ready to go, and here are all the ingredients, as you can see. So the first thing I do is here's the top bun, here's the bottom bun, and then the first thing I do is I like to put the sauce on the bottom, put a lot of sauce because that's how I roll. There we go. No sauce there. And then now I like to put the avocado. It's gonna be really good guys, trust me. There we go. Avocado. And then now I put the hamburger patties. And <laughs> look at that cheese guys. Oh my god, look at that cheese. There we go. Looks good, doesn't it, guys? So now, the bacon. Put a lot of bacon, because I love bacon. Here we go. Baking it up. And then now I put a little more sauce. So that's how I am. Sauce boy. 
Then now I'll put the egg on top. Here's a sunny side up egg. And uh, let's just like that. There we go, guys. And now here's the hair for you guys. This looks, this looks amazing. So now then I cut it. Then I cut it in half to show you the cross section. Just nice and even. Oh god, it's starting to fall apart. This always happens, but this is part of the this is part of the joy. It just falls apart. I like when it falls apart. And then now, oh, I'll cut a little more. And there we go. Look at, look at that cross section, guys. And now put some potatoes on the plate. And there we go. My favorite part, of course, is the eating segment. And I must say, this is the best hamburger I've ever made in my life. Now. Sure, you can probably make a better hamburger than this, but I don't know how. I mean, look at it, it looks amazing. Anyways, my third part, the taste test. So here it is, guys. Cheers. This. And uh, this might be a little too messy for some, but man, I don't really care. I gotta eat this thing. And here we go. Bon appetit. It's a little messy, but wow. That is amazing, guys. It's so good. Oh man, it's, it's great. And uh, can't forget a pickle. Mm. And if you guys want, you can always put jalapenos in your hamburger. It's up to you. If you like spice or not. And the chip. Excellent, guys.